Hello everyone, Dave Landry with DaveLandry.com. In this week's video market update, I want to talk about how to survive and possibly even prosper during the upcoming bear market. Now the question is, hey Big Dave, how do you know we're going to have a bear market? Well, no one knows for sure. No one knows exactly where the market is headed. However, we do have some fairly ominous signs out there. Now rather than get into all those, which I'm going to cover in a lot more detail, tomorrow's Dave Landry's the week in charts, that's October 1st, 2015. I thought I would just update you on a couple of things. First of all, on a net net basis, the market is actually negative than where it's, it's actually less than where it was, easy for me to say, approximately a year ago. So anybody who purchased stocks over the last year is now feeling a little pressure because they're losing money in their portfolio. Also think about those people who bought during this great bull market run we had since 2009. They're now beginning to see a little pressure because they're no longer making money in this what appeared to be eternal money machine. They're starting to lose a little money now, so they might feel a little pressure to sell. The other thing I wanted to update you on is the fact that the high flyers have really begun to implode in here. In fact, I think uh, Biotech's probably the poster child for that. Biotech's dropped about 30% over the past couple of months. So take a look at some of those high flyers. I'm a momentum, momentum guy. Again, easy for me to say. But... Unfortunately, it ends badly. In the end, these things roll over and they roll over hard. And that's why we use stops and trail stops and we also take partial profits along the way. Now, let's talk about how to survive and possibly even prosper during, during the upcoming bear market. First of all, have a plan in place on any longs that you have left over. Over the past several months, we've gotten stopped out of all of our longs right before this market began to roll over. I think we might have had one on right as the market was rolling over. And that's a wonderful thing. It was a beautiful thing. That doesn't always happen. It doesn't always unfold that beautifully. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm just saying that I followed the plan and that you too, and you too should be following your plan. That means honor your stops on any longs. If you are a trader and you're still long some stocks, then you must be in some fantastic stocks and just keep riding that momentum. But again, as usual, on that stop, make sure you have a chair for when the music stops. The second thing you need to do is don't buy things because they are quote unquote on sale. Over the past two weeks, I've been approached by a couple of people who told me that they bought Disney because it was on sale. Keep in mind that just because something is cheap doesn't mean that it can't become even more cheap or cheaper, I should say. As I often say, uh, when it comes to stocks, sometimes it's darkest right before it gets more dark. So be careful. Don't try to catch that falling knife. It's really a bad idea. And think about this too. Uh, a client recently pointed out to me that Apple has over 5,000 funds that are holding Apple. So that would be a good example of a very popular stock. If those funds begin to sell that stock, that's going to put pressure on that stock and make it drop even further. So as Tom McCullen often says, when you're buying a stock, you're forming a relationship between you and the company, but you're also forming a relationship to anyone else who has bought that company prior to you. And those people, quoting Tom, will screw you. So just make sure you have a stop in place. The third thing you need to do on the long side is seek out inefficiencies. An inefficient stock can move contrary to the overall market. Usually these stocks or more uh, speculative type of issues. They usually don't have any, any type of uh, meaningful fundamentals and they trade purely on emotions. I have a free report on my website, so check that out for more on trading inefficient stocks. IPOs are a wonderful example. Right now, I have a couple of IPOs on my radar because they're going higher in spite of the market going lower and they could set up soon. But I think a couple is a key word in that sentence. There's not a whole lot to look at alongside, even within those IPOs. The third thing, I'm sorry, the fourth thing you need to do is realize that cash is not trash. There's nothing wrong with sitting in cash. If you sit in cash and the market drops, not that it's you against them or us against them, however you want to look at it, but you're going to beat the vast majority of money managers. So there's nothing wrong with being cash. As I often say as, a, as a, a sailor or a previous sailor, I guess I should say, it's better to be on the dock wishing you were out to sea than out to sea wishing that you were on 
the dock. My pilot friends say it even better. It's better to be on the ground wishing you in the air, obviously, than to be in the air wishing you were on the ground. So there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with being in cash. There's nothing wrong with being out of the market. Even if you do consider yourself a trader, it's okay to wait for opportunities. The fifth thing is take a look at commodities. Now, don't buy commodities for the sake of buying commodities. Buy commodities because they're going up. Gold would be the obvious choice right now. Unfortunately, it looks like the bottom there is going to be more of a process than an event. The energies, those stocks are actually scraping bottom. They hit new lows just yesterday. So I wouldn't rush out and buy those just yet. Although oil, the commodity, looks like it's trying to make a turn. Now, again, it might be more of a process than an event. So keep an eye on those areas. Uh, full disclosure, we are long at this present time, USO. So that's uh, the crude oil ETF. Now, the next question is, should you short or not? Well, shorts, quite frankly, are a big pain in the ass. The retrace rallies suck. You get short, you're feeling good, the market's selling off, you're feeling smart, and all of a sudden, you have this big retrace rally, takes you out your shorts, and then what happens, the market rolls right back over. So shorting, make no bones about it, is not easy. Obviously, the most you could ever make on a short trade is 100%. Now you can do, you can trade around the position. That's a little bit more involved than I want to get into today and make a little bit more by trading around that core position. But as a general statement, if you just shorted a stock and you rolled it all the way down, the most you can make is 100%. So that's another problem with the short side. Obviously, there's some logistics. You have to borrow them and there could be buybacks. So I don't want to get too far into all that, but as a general statement, shorting could be a pain. Now, let me interview myself. Do I short stocks? Yes. Will I continue to start shock, short stocks? Again, easy for me to say. The answer is yes. And, and it was like, why, Dave? You just said that shorting is a pain. Well, there's two reasons. One, it's the only way to make money sometimes in a market. Like in 2008, when everything went down, that was the only way you could make money was to short stocks. Okay. The second reason is a little less obvious. My friends and the people that I know who are long only oriented, they always seem to be positive. I guess they don't want to be a pessimist because they figured it, it won't work out. But the, uh, all kidding aside, it's like they tend to only see the positives when it comes to the markets and they don't see both sides. I think if you do learn to short markets, you see setups on the downside, you see setups on the upside. And I think these obvious sell signals, which have been very obvious to me over the past few weeks, will become obvious to you too. So I, I like to short, not just, I mean, obviously I want to make as much money as possible, but the shorting is not so much to make money, but to, to make you a better trader and allow you to see both sides of the market. So definitely consider the short side, but do wait for setups. This rollover we had recently, the market sold off hard and then it went straight back up and it chopped back and forth. It's been really hard to get in on the short side. So it's not like we're short uh, to the gills right now or anything. We're just looking for our spots carefully. Now, keep in mind that if this thing continues to roll over and does make a significant move to the downside, that's okay that we're a little late to the game on the short side. As a trend follower, you will, as a general statement, be a little late to the game. But right now, it looks like we have an upcoming bear market. So get ready to get ready. Uh, do these things I just said. At the least, honor your stops and stay in cash. If you don't walk away with anything from today's video, I think those two things are two good things to do. Try those other things if you're a little bit more uh, educated and a little bit more advanced in your trading. Uh, any questions, I answer all emails personally. Dave at DaveLandry.com. Everyone have a fantastic day and happy trading.